made. And we have come to rejoice and to be glad in it. And Father, we are looking up unto you this morning that as we have come, that your presence will be with us. You will guide us. You will lead us. You will bless our lives. And everything that, you need, that we need in, from you this day will be supplied in Jesus' name. Thank you, dear Father, for the answer. In Jesus' name we pray. We remain standing as we sing together from our gospel hymns and song, hymn number 10, hymn number 10. Oh, for a thousand tongues to sing. Oh, for a thousand tongues to sing. My great Redeemer's praise. The glories of my God and King. The trumps of his grace. My gracious Master and my God, assist me to proclaim, to spread through all the earth abroad the honors of thy name, Jesus, the name that charms our fears, that bees our soul. It is music in the sinner's ears. It is life and health and peace. It breaks the power of counsel's sin. He set the prisoners free. His blood can make the foulest clean. His blood avail for me. Hear him, ye deaf. His praise, ye dumb. Your loose tongues employ, ye blind. Behold, your Savior come, and leap ye lame for joy. we thank you so much for the privilege of coming before you to worship in spirit and in truth and the promise that each time we come you will always bless us but we pray as we look into the scripture this morning you will speak to our hearts help us to understand what you are teaching us give us all the grace we need to be the doers of your word. 
thank you, Father, for the answer. For in Jesus' holy and mighty name, we have prayed. Can I have a better amen? amen? It is now time for searching the scripture. Last week, our lesson was titled, What? Proof of True Faith. And during that teaching, we are reminded that true faith, genuine faith, will always be accompanied by actions. We saw the example of Rahab, who got saved, not only because she had faith in the God of Israel, but because she took action in saving and protecting the spies. And through that action, she was saved with her entire family. This morning, we are looking at study 891, and it is titled, Power of the Human Tongue. Can we say it together after the count of two? Our text will be taken from the book of James chapter 3, reading from verse 1 to verse 18. Before we read the text, I want to ask for a volunteer who will come forward to share our memory verse with us. Our memory verse is taken from James chapter 3, verse 6. I equally request for a volunteer, a very fast reader, who will come forward after taking the memory verse to read our text for us. Anybody volunteering to take our memory verse to recite it with us and for us? Praise the Lord. Go ahead. Our memory verse is taken from James chapter 3, verse 6. And it says, And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members, that it defileth the whole body, and set it on fire the course of nature, and it is set on fire of hell. Thank you very much. Yes, my brother, take the text. James chapter 3, from verse 1. My brethren, be not many masters, knowing that we shall receive the great condemnation. For in many things we offend all. If any man be offend not in word, the same is a perfect man, and able also to bridle the whole body. Behold, we put bits in the horse's mouth, that they may obey us, and we turn about their whole body. Behold, also the sheep, we do they be so great, and are driven of fierce winds, yet are they turned about with a very small hand, whithersoever the governor listed. Even so, the tongue is a little member, and boasted great things. Behold, how great a matter a little tongue, a little fire kindled. And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members, that it defileth the whole body, and set it on fire the course of nature, and is set on the power of hell. For every kind of beast, and of birds, and of serpents, and of things in the sea is tamed, and had been tamed of mankind. But the tongue can no man tame. It is an unruly evil, full of deadly poison. Therewith bless we God, even the Father, and therewith cause we men, which are made after the similitude of God. Out of the same mouth proceeded blessing and cursing, my brethren. These things ought not so to be. But the fountain sent forth at the same place sweet water and bitter. Can the fig tree be, can the fig tree, my brethren, bear olive berries, either a vine fig, so can no fountain both yield salt and salt water and fresh. Who is a wise man and endued with knowledge among you? Let him show out of a good conversation his works with meekness of wisdom. But if ye have bitter envy and strife in your heart, glory not. Ally not against the truth. This wisdom descended not from above, but is earthly, sensual, devilish. For where envy and strife is, there is confusion and every evil work. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, and easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. Thank you, and God bless you. From our text, we see that our tongue plays 
a very dominant role in our day-to-day -day lives. We communicate with our tongues, we give instruction with our tongues, and we equally spread the gospel with our tongues. And James tells us that the tongue is a very powerful instrument that can either be used for good or for evil. The tongue can be used for building up or for tearing down. The tongue can be used for edifying or for discouraging. The tongue of some people have been used for strengthening the church and also weakening the members of the church and consequently weakening the church. And it tells us that brethren, this thing ought not so to be. It reminds us again the danger, the consequences of misusing our tongues either in our families, in the place of work, or in the church. And that's why in Proverbs chapter 18, verse 21, the Bible says that death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. I have a question here. The question is, explain the awesome, the extraordinary power of the tongue. Who can help us? Tell us the awesome power of the tongue. Uh, the scripture says the man out of the abundance of the heart uh, bringeth that which is good. Out of the abundance of the heart of the evil man bringeth that which is evil. So the tongue has the power to make or to mar us. And at the end of the day, it has the power to send us to eternal life in Christ and to send us to hell. This is the Thank you. Part. We are going to consider the message of this morning under three subheadings. Point number one, we are going to look at the disciplined tongue and spiritual maturity. Point number two, we will consider the destructive tongue and Satan's manipulation. And point number three, we look at the development and training of our spiritual members. We go back to point number one now. The discipline, the disciplined tongue and spiritual maturity. Let's go to our text in James chapter three, reading from verse one. There the Bible tells us, my brethren, that is talking to believers, be not many masters, knowing that we shall receive the greater condemnation. What does this mean? My brethren, be not many masters. While it is okay, while it is all right, while it is expected of us when we are committed as believers to be active, to be involved, it is not important to rush and take up the master position, the leader position the, at the group level, the district level, the central church, and take over every conversation and be teaching everybody without first and foremost ensuring that you have a wholesome tongue, that the Lord has touched your life and thereby have touched your tongue, that your tongue has become the tongue of the learned. If you do that, your tongue is likely to contradict what you teach others and thereby bringing upon you a greater condemnation, meaning a stricter judgment, because to whom much is given, much is expected. That's why it is important that every one of us should endeavor to submit not only our lives, but particularly our tongues to the Lord. In verse 2, we are told there, for in many things we offend all. If any man offend not in word, the same is perfect man. And also 
all unable to also bridle the whole body. In many things, we offend. We need to be careful here, and many of us are likely to say, how do I offend in words? I can never, I can't remember when I publicly abused somebody. I can't remember when I publicly use my tongue in such a disgraceful manner. But we need to be careful because there are some other areas that if we don't watch it carefully, our tongues will be used by the enemy to offend. How can that happen? You may be a believer and you think you are very careful, but sometimes you offend if when you are giving a report, you are very selective in the way you do it in order to present yourself as a hero and put other people down. It may not be obvious that you have misused your tongue, but as long as God is concerned, that is also an offense. Again, we, we, we offend with our tongues when we slander people, when we say things that are not true. We also offend with our tongue when we say some insincere, complimentary words depending on whom we are talking to in order to gain some favor or gain recognition. If we are not sincere in our communication, no matter how well packaged it is, we have offended in words. And James tells us that we need to be careful so that we do not offend in one. That if any of us is able to coordinate, to control, to rein in our tongue, then we are good to go. We are good Christians. We are able to overcome every other temptation and live the Christian lives that is expected of us. In verse 3, it tells us that a small object is put into a powerful horse's mouth. And with that, the horse is controlled, directed, and told which way to go. It tells us that as large as a sheep is, it just takes a small object being wind right to left by the captain to decide where the sheep should go. And you think about it. How did you get here this morning? You probably came in your car. You are steering. It's not the biggest part of your car. Yet it is that steering that determined how, which road to take, where to turn left, and how you got here. Even the big buses we bought, we bought are controlled by the steering. And then the human tongue is likened to such things that if we are not careful, our tongues can control us either for good or for bad. You may have overcome all other kinds of temptations. You may not be living in adultery. You may not be fighting on the street. You may think you are a good man, but you have issue when it comes to being able to control your tongue. The lesson of this morning is meant to bring us to Calvary. I mean those who are not yet saved, those who realize that I try my best in every other area, but when it comes to this matter of using the tongue, that is where I have issue. For such people, the Lord is inviting you to Calvary this morning so that as you surrender your life and allow the Lord to touch you and touch your tongue, you will possess a wholesome tongue and become a better Christian, qualified to serve and ready for the coming of the Lord. That will be your portion in Jesus' name. In James chapter 1, verse 19, there we are told, Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, and slow to rot. Slow to speak and slow to rot. In Matthew chapter 12, verse 37, there the scripture tells us, For by the words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words 
thou shalt be condemned. The ability to control your tongue is the evidence of maturity. I'm talking about spiritual maturity. The ability to use your tongue right, speak the, speak the right words to the right persons at the right time, using your words, your tongue, to edify and not to tear down, to encourage and not to discourage, is the evidence of spiritual maturity. And so we move on to, the, to point number two. In point number two, we are looking at the destructive tongue and Satan's manipulation. The destructive tongue and Satan's manipulation. In our text, James chapter 3, reading from verse 7, there the Bible tells us, for every kind of beast and of birds and of serpents and of things in the sea is tamed and had been tamed of mankind, verse 8, but the tongue can no man tame. It is an unruly evil, full of deadly poison. Therewith bless we God, even the Father, and therewith cause we men, which are made after the similitude of God. You see that in these verses, the tongue is likened to an untamed beast an unruly evil and think about it James tells us that it is easier to tame wild animals than to tame the tongue it is easier to bring wild animals under control than to bring the tongue under control that tells us the danger in having a tongue that is not brought under the power of God. In Proverbs chapter 10, verse 19, there we are told, in the multitude of words, there wanted not sin, but he that re refrained his lips is wise. When our tongue is not tamed, and church, please listen. I want to say this morning, do you know the right time to keep quiet? It is at that particular time that it appears there is fire burning within you. There is the urge to speak out, pour it out, say it anyhow. I don't care what they will say or what they will do. Let me just pour it out the way I feel. That is the time to keep quiet. It is better to be quiet than to say words that will hurt people, that will not glorify God, that will bring condemnation upon you. And he says that this tongue is so unruly that it needs to be tamed. When it is not tamed, it creates opportunity for Satan to manipulate it. Some people, once they open the mouth, the devil will always be waiting for the mouth to be opened so he can lay hands on the tongue and manipulate and use it the way he wants. Brethren, with tongues, families have been built up. With tongues, families have been torn apart. With tongues, relationships have been built up. With tongues as well, relationships have been destroyed. It tells us that the tongue is like a little spark of fire that consumes a huge forest. In Matthew chapter 12, verse 35 again, 
a good man out of the good treasure of his heart bringeth forth good things, and evil man out of evil treasure of his heart bringeth forth evil things. I have a question. How can a natural person ensure proper use of the tongue? Any volunteer from the choristers? A natural person? Anybody close? Anybody very close to the front? Yes, there's a hand here. Can you rise up and tell us? A natural man, not saved yet, but how can he make proper use of the tongue? By giving his or her life to Christ. Thank you. By giving his or her life to Christ, when that has not taken place, the tongue is usually available for the devil to, manip to manipulate. Another question. Describe the negative effect of an untamed tongue. Yes, I need some volunteer. The negative effects, terrible effects of untamed tongue. I need somebody else. Is there nobody, no sister, to help us and tell us negative effects? I want a sister, please. No sister in this church that can say something? Praise the Lord. The negative effects include it will ruin an individual, it will ruin a total family, and can even ruin a whole nation if we're not taming our tongues. Thank you very much. A negative tongue, let me put it this way, Nations has gone into war because somebody or some people misused the tongue. And through that, a lot of lives lost, a lot of souls perished. Families have been destroyed because of negative tongue, negative use of tongue. Children have been brought up or destroyed because of not using the tongues well. No wonder. He says that the, in the multitude of words, they are wanted not, they lack not sin. But he that refraineth his tongue, his lip, shall be wise. Point number three, the development and training of our spiritual members. Remember that James told us that the tongue no man can tame. But thank God... He didn't tell us that the tongue cannot be tamed. He simply said that a man, a natural man, cannot tame his tongue. In our text, James chapter 3, reading from verse 13, there the Bible tells us, who is a wise man and endued with knowledge among you, let him show out of a good conversation his works, with meekness. It is possible to have our tongues tamed. And this morning, those of us whose tongues are not tamed yet, I state it clearly that in the name of Jesus Christ, you will not go back home with unruly tongue. Can I have a better amen? amen? In Psalm 34, verse 13, keep thy tongue from evil and thy lips from speaking guile. It is possible. Do you ever think about it? That this tongue we are talking about, it has no bone, but it's strong enough to break a heart. Have you ever thought about it? The tongue we are talking about has no bone, but it's strong enough to break a family, to break relationships. No wonder the psalmist prayed and said in Psalm 141, set a watch, O Lord, before my mouth. Keep the door of my lips. In Proverbs chapter 16, verse 32, he that is slow to anger is better than the mighty, and he that ruleth his spirit than he 
that take it a city. Take this back home. You are a better person, a stronger person, if you are able to keep your tongue, if you are able to control your tongue, you wake up in the morning, you go through the day, and when you are going to bed, you think again, you refresh, you think about all you did and said from morning to the time you are going to bed, and you cannot find misuse of tongue. You are a very strong person. The Bible says you are even stronger than the man that conquers a city and take it. Think about it again. Every other part of your body gets tired, except your tongue. I've never met a man, a person that says, my tongue is tired. No matter how tired you are, the tongue is always willing and ready to be given the situation report. We need to be careful. We need to pray and say, God, touch my tongue. And when we pray like that, our God is faithful. He will answer our prayers. From today, the Lord will give you a wholesome tongue. From today, the Lord will give you a tongue of the learned. From today, by the grace of God, you will not offend with your tongue. If only you will desire it and pray about it and be determined about it to say, God, I yield my tongue as instrument in your hand to say only the things that you want said, where you want it said, when you want it said, only the things that will like defy the brethren in the church and strengthen the church, only the words that will glorify the name of the Lord and expand the kingdom of God. I want to say from today, we will not allow the devil to use our tongues anymore. You will not allow the enemy to lay hands on your tongues anymore. Your family will be better. Your prayer life will be better. Your relationship with everyone around you will be better if only you can take charge of your tongue and use it the way God intends tongue to be used. Set a watch over my tongue. Search a watch over my mouth and keep the door of my lips. Let's bow down our heads and pray to God. Let's tell the Lord, here I am, God. I've overcome all the temptations in all these other areas. You've been helping me. But in this area of use of tongue, I pray, Father, that from today, from today, from today, the words of my mouth will be acceptable to you. Wherever I am, in all circumstances, in all situations, God, take over my tongue and use it to the glory of your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Can we say a lively amen? amen? Father, thank you for teaching us. Thank you for reminding us of the need to reign in our tongues. We have prayed and we are believing you that from today, our tongues will become wholesome. We glorify your holy name. We'll be used to the glory of your name and the expansion of your kingdom only. Thank you, Lord, for answering our prayers. For in Jesus' holy name, we have prayed. Can we say another amen? Good morning, class. We have just uh, listened to the teaching on the power of the tongue. If you have any question from the teaching, you can raise up your hand. Any question from the teaching? If you are raising up your hand, you come to the front now. Any question? I can't see any hand there. If you are raising up your hand, you can come forward. Praise the Lord. Okay. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Okay. Good 
morning, sir. Good morning. My question is, uh, you know, I yesterday I went out for money crown. And unfortunately, I was evangelizing in the in the in the community when I live. Somebody came to me. They were arranging the pulpit of the Irish and all that. But that is not the reason why I came out. But unfortunately, I was preaching Jesus Christ, and some people they were collecting my heartbeat. Somebody came to me and uh, asked me to stop preaching. That today is an election. And I listened to him. I said, Is it right for me to come out to evangelize Jesus Christ to the dying sinful world and you are asking me to stop evangelizing you say, she said I am a worker I am a pastor in redeem that when she talked to me I have to obey her I say you are a worker and you are a pastor and the redeemed Christian church of God and you want me to stop evangelizing Jesus Christ to the die, see for what? Say yes. I say in the first place, do you know that I have the right to judge you the way you appear? That's the, your, your dressing alone disqualify you as a child of God. She, she say because I wear trust. I say yeah, the Bible called them trustist. Go back to the scripture. The Bible called them to this, and God cannot change his sword because of your calamity. There's an old man there saying, Madam, do you know how this young man is telling you the truth? But somebody came out and said, You need to listen to him and let him deliver you from eternal air. Sir, I want to I want to actually find out. The way I present it there, because I did not go straight to abuse her, but she came to me, and I went, I was counseling her. Somebody, you know, responded to my counseling, and she said she's a worker, and she's a pastor in Redeem. And I told him, I'm not a worker, I'm not a pastor in Deep Alabama Church, but I know the scripture. Thank you, sir. Now, uh, first of all, we need to understand that uh, as believers, we are expected to obey the law of the land. Even though Jesus gave us the commission that we should preach the gospel, we should, he didn't ask us to disobey the law of the land. Uh, yesterday uh, was uh, election day, and you know that uh, there was tension everywhere. Uh, even if you want to preach the gospel, you are not supposed to uh, be challenging people, be accusing people, be judging people. The gospel is very clear. You preach the gospel, you preach Jesus Christ and Jesus alone. And when it comes to somebody trying to go into argument with you, an evangelist does not argue with people. Look at Romans chapter 13, in verse 1, it says, Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers, for there is no power but of God. The powers that be are ordained of God. So we don't resist uh, the law of the land. Uh, you could have uh, been wise enough to understand that uh, you shouldn't create uh, tension among uh, the people there that are uh, coming to vote. Uh, so since uh, that person came to you, you could have just used wisdom to not to argue with him, with him or her. Uh, you are saying that the dresses he's wearing uh, is, uh, is not qualified to be this, could be that. That's not uh, a very good thing. Thank you. Next question. Good morning, sir. Good morning. My question is this. For what we have studied today about the power of the tongue, and I've seen to it how the tongue has been causing in our life, especially we that we say we are Christian, we have learned how the tongue break families. At times, even some people that we take them to be maybe our spiritual fathers, the tongue can even cause us to be discouraged about their courage to us. So I want to ask, what can we believers do 
so that we can bring them our tongue, so that we can have maybe that spirit of sanctification, so that at any time that maybe no matter how the situation, the problem or the hardness in us, we can be able to control our tongue. What can we do so that we can have that big dead tongue? Thank you very much. In Isaiah chapter 6, uh, remember that Isaiah was already a preacher. He was uh, a well-known prophet of God. But he got to a stage in his life, he discovered that uh, something was wrong. Look at Isaiah chapter 6, in verse, um, let me read from verse 1. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. Above it stood the seraphim. Each one had six wings. With twain he covered his face, and with twain he covered his feet, and with twain he did fly. And one cried unto another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the post of the door moved at the, vo at the voice of him that cried, and the house was filled with smoke. Then said I, Woe is me, I am undone, because I am a man of unclean leaves, and I dwell in the midst of the people of unclean leaves. For my eyes have seen the king, the Lord of hosts. Now, you know, Isaiah had an experience because uh, he was uh, a prophet and he had been praying, and before that time he had been preaching. He had been talking about the coming Messiah. But this time, while he was praying, God opened his eyes to understand his situation. And what was his, res his response? Then he, he, he realized himself. The first thing you do is to realize yourself. You know it, that something is wrong. The problem we have with many people, people talk about sanctification. I'm sanctified, I'm sanctified. But then, whatever Christian experiences you have, if that experience is not tested, you will not understand whether it is there or not. You just go about and say, I am sanctified, I am filled with Holy Ghost. But when the situation comes in, that, that's the time you will know. Isaiah here saw himself, and then he had to pray. Let's look at uh, uh, verse 5 again. He said, Woe is me, I am an undone, I am undone because I am a man of unclean lips. I mean, a prophet has, has agreeing that he is a man of unclean lips. And then he prayed. He said, Then flew one of the seraphims unto me, having a live coal in his hand, which, had, which he had taken with the tongues of, from off the altar. And he laid it upon my mouth and said, Lo, this has taught thy lips, and thy iniquity is taken away, and the same point. And it, it was as a result of realizing it. We don't just keep going about with uh, empty uh, Christian experiences. You know, it, whatever we have, if you are saved by the, by the fruit of your salvation, we'll know. If you are sanctified, you will know. In, in your place where you sell in the market, the people in your market, they will know whether you are a Christian or not. It is not for you. You know, here we don't put a uh, sticker, deeper life family, but they do so in some other churches. But it's our life, our, our comportment, our relationship with other people, our actions and reactions to whatever happens around us that will make people to know that we are a Christian. So if you find yourself like that, you know that uh, there are such problems, stresses in you, go to the Lord, go and pray. Check up your sanctification again and pray, and the Lord will sanctify you. And once you are sanctified, then you are sure that uh, you will not misuse your mouth. Thank you very much. Is that all right? Okay. N next question. Good morning, sir. Please, sir, my question is this. Hey, we learn from how to use the tongue in a good way. Please, sir, if at all I notice as a Christian, I notice that I say something, and it, that thing is bringing a cause on my life, or consequence is coming to my life already, and I notice it, and I'm going through it, what do I now have to do, or what, which action will I take now for me, for the removal of that consequence on my life? Well, it's very simple. The first thing is a good thing that once you, you know it, that's the first thing. You know, even coming to be a Christian, the first thing is for you to realize that you are a sinner. And once you realize it, you know you, use, you misuse your tongue. Misuse your tongue means simply that uh, you need another experience, you need another touch of God. The same thing that happened to Isaiah is to happen to you. We pray to the Lord and tell the Lord that this my tongue, 
bridle my tongue for me. It is the prayer you pray to God that God will answer. And when you pray, God will always uh, bridle your tongue for you. Thank you. Next question. Good morning, sir. Sir, I don't actually understand the way you answered the first question. That's why I came out. Because this brother told us that he went for morning cry. And at this morning cry, morning cry used to be early in the morning. Before 7 or 8, the morning cry is ended. And somebody came and challenged him that he was preaching on an election day. Does that make us not to do our morning cries on election day or on any other public day? Because the other time also, we were going out. And by the time we are passing a mosque, they came out and want to drag our, uh, our mic from us. That why should we preach here? Or that why should we? Is that those things not discouraging people from making their morning cries and preaching the gospel? Because the gospel has to be preached, not minding whether it is election or nothing. That election is different from uh, preaching the gospel and getting people saved into the kingdom. That's why I came out, sir. Thank you. Well, uh, I said it very clearly. We need wisdom in doing whatever we need to do. Uh, you, you, you know that the church has been praying, the nation has been praying about the election. And uh, you don't just uh, necessarily go on to go and dig out things. Uh, we told people that uh, they should be very careful because uh, a lot of things happen in the night, all through before the election. And that's why I answered that question like that. But understand, we don't preach gospel of contention. Uh, if you are passing through the, the mosque, uh, you, can't, you are doing morning cry, you don't go and put your megaphone in their front and be talking like this. No, that does not make them to believe Christ. Uh, 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 preaching has to be, uh, uh, the evangelism has to be done in a normal way, not uh, with contention. That's why I answered like that, and he understood. Thank you. Now, uh, our, time is, uh, our time is gone. Uh, the, the, what we have studied in this uh, passage is so very important for us. And uh, as believers, we need to understand very, very well. We talk about tongue. Uh, it, it, that makes us to understand that if you are a child of God, you don't just stop your Christian journey at salvation. You need to uh, pray, to pray through to sanctification. Because uh, if you don't pray, you cannot, if you are not sanctified, the tendency is for you to misuse your tongue. All the words that you have heard about all over the world is caused by the statement made by somebody. That's why in our memory verse, in verse uh, 6 of um, James, it says, And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. So is the tongue among members that it defiled the whole body and set it on fire the cause of nature and it is set on fire. And so you need to understand that that your tongue is very important. Even if you don't, uh, you didn't even want to think about uh, uh, what is happening around you, you think about holiness, about heaven, because without holiness, you cannot get to, to heaven. So you need to pray and make sure you are sanctified. When you are sanctified, it is very difficult for you to be, talk, to be saying things that you ought not to say. Uh, as you look at the people in the world, most of those uh, young people, you see that they are uh, mental all over the place as a result of somebody cursing them. And we, as children of God, we don't use our mouth to curse our children. You know, your child may have uh, a little uh, problem or make a mistake. Don't curse that child. Don't say negative to that child because whatever you say with your tongue, uh, that thing can happen. That's why we must make sure that we bridle uh, our tongue. In uh, Matthew chapter 15, Matthew chapter 15, I read uh, verse 11. Let me read from verse 10. And he called the multitude and said unto them, Hear and understand, not that which goeth into the mouth defileth a man, but that which cometh out of the mouth, this defileth a man. As believers, we hear a lot in the church. We hear a lot, we read a lot in the Bible. If you can make sure that what comes out of your mouth is much more of the word of God, then you will be a blessing to the world around you. In Matthew chapter 12, Matthew chapter 12, in verse um, 
35, Matthew chapter 12, verse 35, it says, A good man, out of the good treasure of, his, of the heart, bringeth forth good things. And an evil man, out of the evil treasure, bringeth forth evil things. But I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. That should give us, that should put some fear in us. When you want to say anything, then you make sure that uh, the word you want to say will not stand against you on the day of judgment. Uh, the greatest gift you can, he, you can have as a believer is the gift of hearing the voice of God. Anything you want to do, anything you want to say, if you are hearing from God, God still leads his people. God still directs his people. If you are hearing from God, you say exactly what God wants you to say, you will not have any problem with anybody. And uh, we as believers, Jesus Christ said, we are the light of the world. And he said, let your light so shine before men. And everywhere we go, whether you, don't, you talk or you don't talk, the light of God should shine in you. That people will see you, the Holy Spirit will, will radiate its presence around you. And uh, you'll be attractive to the people so that they will listen to you. It's not, you know, we want to go and preach, it's all right. But when you are going to preach, pray. And when you pray, you, 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 the Holy Spirit radiates around you. The people you, want, you, you, you are meeting, the Holy Spirit will attract them, attract you to them, and you begin to talk. But when you don't pray, you just feel that, well, I'm going to preach the gospel, I'm going to preach the gospel without prayer. That's why you find, you find yourself, uh, people begin to uh, attack you, they begin to resist you. But from today, as we have uh, looked at this uh, study today, we are going to pray so that when you pray, uh, God will manifest his power around us, our lives, our utterances, our actions, our reactions will bring souls to the kingdom. Let's rise up now and go to the Lord in prayer. We want to talk to the Lord. The psalmist says, set a watch, O Lord, before my mouth. Keep the, the door of my lips. Tell the Lord, Lord, set a watch before my mouth. Ask the Lord to set a watch before your mouth. And if you are just uh, a Christian, you only remember, I repented 10 years ago, I repented 20 years ago, yet you are not thinking about certification. Isaiah the prophet, even if you have uh, entered into the workforce, Isaiah the prophet, he realized himself. You can realize yourself today and pray to the Lord and say, God, do something new in my life. And like he did for Isaiah, he will touch your tongue this morning. Ask the Lord to touch your tongue afresh this morning. If he has not done it before, he will touch your tongue this morning. When he touches your tongue this morning, you will not say, you will not talk anyhow. You will say only what God wants you to say. Pray unto the Lord. Pray unto the Lord. Ask the Lord, Lord, help me. Lord, help me. Lord, help me. If you have evil tongue, you can ask the Lord to help you today that that evil tongue will be turned to good tongue. Pray. It's a very personal prayer. Pray to the Lord. A lot of people. They have lost their families, the peace in their family because of the tongue. Some have lost their job because of the tongue. A so-called believer saying, I say whatever I like. My, that's what my mind tells me. And what you are saying, that's not what God wants you to say. You create problem in the fellowship. You create problem in the family. You create problem in your, in your secular employment because of your tongue. Tell the Lord, Lord, today, do something new in my life. Do something new in my life. He will do it. The Lord will do it. If you know that uh, you are born again, you are not being sanctified, the Lord that can sanctify you this morning. Very simple. Just realize it, that you need sanctification. If you are the one that has been running your mouth everywhere, you need sanctification. Pray, Lord, sanctify me. Oh, Lord, sanctify me. Oh, Lord, sanctify me. We are preparing for the rapture. That's what the church is waiting for now. Your tongue can hinder you from going in the rapture. Because by your tongue, you'll be justified. By your tongue, you'll be condemned. Pray to the Lord. Lord, bridle this my tongue. Enough is enough. Bridle this my tongue. Remember, if you are not born again, you cannot be talking about sanctification. 
You need to pray. Ask the Lord to save you. Very simple. It's not an accident that you are here this morning. God has something to do in your life. Ask the Lord, save me. Confess your sins, repent of them, and invite Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior. He will save you. Thereafter, you can pray for sanctification. And you'll be sanctified. If you have used your tongue to stop progress in the lives of your children, to stop their spiritual progress, their academic progress, you better go and pray and go and reverse it with your tongue. If you have used your tongue to destroy peace in your family, go back that same tongue, use it now, and change things. In Jesus' name we pray. Our Father, we are very grateful to you for the way you have uh, spoken to us this morning. We know that you love us. We know that you want us to live a beautiful Christian life while we are here, and you want us to get to heaven. Father, we are just asking, O oh Lord, in whatever area that any one of us might have misused our tongues, you have mercy in Jesus' name. This morning, Lord, as many have realized themselves that the use of tongue has created a problem for them, and they have come back to you, that you did to Isaiah, Lord, touch our tongues with coal of fire. And Lord, turn things around in our lives in Jesus' name. Give us peace in our lives. Give us peace in our families. Give us peace in our environment. And make us carriers of peace through our tongues in Jesus' name. And the grace to be sensitive to your spirit, to hear your voice and do your will alone, grant unto us in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, for the answer. In Jesus' name we pray.
Praise the Lord. As let's rise up as we sing from our gospel hymns and song. We are singing from hymn number 192. Hymn number 192. Oh, for a heart to praise my God. Oh, for a heart to praise my God. A heart from sin set free. A heart that always feels thy blood. So freely. Spirit for me. A heart resigned, submissive, meek. My great Redeemer's throne. Where only Christ is hard to speak, where Jesus reigns alone, a humble, lonely, contrite heart, believing true and clean, which neither life nor death can part from him that dwells within, a heart in every thought renewed and full of love divine, perfect and right and pure and good, a copy, Lord of thine. Thy nature, gracious Lord in part, come quickly from above. Write thy new name upon my heart, thy new best name of love. Amen. number 225 born fire of God born fire of God my ransom soul possessing pure free thou art and I will dwell in thee 
light of my life, through source of every blessing, grant all my days one holy flame to be, born fire of God, thy grace and glory knowing, my cleansed heart shall be all fire within, love all constraining, tenderness overflowing, one kidney passion other lives to win, born fire of God, thy cloven tongue bestowing, baptizing me with heavenly energy, touch with life coals from off thy altar glowing. My porch leaves shall speak alone of thee, born fire of God with sevenfold refining, till mirror from my deeps thy eye shall see, in purest gold thy perfect image shining, thy Christ reveal in clear irradiancy, born fire of God, by thine own love transcending, let all I hold be thine, and thine alone, heart, mind, and will, a sacrifice ascending, consumed by fire from out thy fiery throne. to go to God now in prayer, just as we have sung, born, fire of God, born. 
where will the fire of God burn this morning? In your heart, in my heart. That whatever that is not of God in our lives, in our hearts, in our soul, in our spirit, that the fire of the word of God that is coming this morning will burn them out of our lives. Open your mouth and talk to God in prayer. Whatever that is choking the word, whatever that is not making the word of God to burn and to grow in our lives, as we have sung that the fire of the word that is coming from the altar this morning, it will descend upon your heart. It will descend upon your soul. It will descend upon your spirit. And whatever that is choking and ganging up in your life, not to make the word of God effective, everything will be born out this morning. Pray unto the Lord. The word of God must have effect in our lives. The word of God must do the work that God has sent it to do in our lives. Anything, anything that is going contrary to the world in your life, I mean in your own life, pray this morning. The fire is coming from the altar. It has started already that it will burn everything away from your life. You will be free to serve God. You will be free to worship God. You will be free to come out to serve God. Tell the Lord, it shall be done this morning. You cannot go back the same this morning. Something new must happen in your life. Something great must happen in your soul. If you're not saved, you will be saved this morning. If there is something that is in you that is not making you to, be, to, to, to enjoy serving the Lord, it must go out from your life this morning through the burning word of God that is coming. Pray this morning and say, God, do something new in my life. In Jesus' name we pray. It's now time to give our tithes and offering. But let's see from the word of God. Malachi chapter 3, I read verse 10. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in my house. And prove me now, hear which, see the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. Now, you want to offer your tithes and offering that you have brought to the Lord this morning. Bring them out from your wallet, from your purse, and lift them up as we pray together before we offer. Father, we thank you because we are yours. And here we come with our tithes and offering to offer for your glory. I pray, O oh Lord, that you receive them at our hands and bless us in return. Thank you, dear Father, for the answer. In Jesus' name we pray. The bags are passed around you. Put your tithes and offering into the bags. After you might have done that, remain in the mood of prayer. You can't go back home the same this morning. Something must happen in your life this morning. Be in the mood of prayer. For those of you that have cast your tithe and offering, we pray, don't allow the word of God to pass you by this morning. It must do something new in our life and in our church. It must do something new in your very life. With all we have heard so far about the tongue, 
whatever that the tongue have done in your life. Contrary to the will of God, today, the word of God is coming again. It must remove those things away from your life. If you have cast your tithe and offering, please remain in the mood of prayer. The Lord is doing something in your life. In Jesus' name we pray. Now we want to pray for our nation. For our nation, I want to read from Psalm 68, verse 30. Rebuke the company of spearmen, the multitude of the bulls, with the calves of the people, till everyone submit himself with piece of silver, or pieces of silver, Scatter thou the people that delight in war. A louder amen. amen. Election has come and gone. I mean, the presidency and the National Assembly election, it has come and gone. But collations and everything is going on now. And now we are going to pray that all those who delight in war, all those who delight in bloodshed, all those who delight in troubles, and commotions that God will silence their voices, that God will silence their weapons, that God will silence all their evil intentions. Open your mouth and pray. No war in this country. Every bloodshed casting demons, the Lord will silence them. Open your mouth and pray for this nation. It's our country, it's our nation. We are here. God has sent us here. We hold the key of this nation. Whatever we bind is bound in heaven. Whatever we lose is lost in heaven. Peace must reign. Peace must reign in this country. In Jesus' name we pray. Every altar of iniquity and sin in this nation must collapse. Wherever the altar of iniquities are located in this nation must collapse. And so you are going to pray this morning. Wherever, any altar, where there is sin, where there is iniquity, Lord, let it collapse. Open your mouth and talk to God. Altar of sin altar of iniquity, altar of wickedness, must collapse. It must. And righteousness will reign in Nigeria. Holiness will reign in Nigeria. Sin will go out. Pray. Your prayer has power to determine the destiny of this nation. Pray that God will have his preeminence in this nation. In Jesus' name we pray. Now we want to pray for our church. The Bible says that upon this rock I build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church. Do you believe that scripture? It's very, it's settled. And now we are going to pray 
that whatever gate that is ganging against Deeper Life Bible Church, what why that gate will collapse. This is a church that God has raised up for his own glory in this nation, in this continent, in this whole world. We want to pray that the glory of deeper life of days gone by will come back fully. Veil against this church. This church is marching on and the Lord will take us to heaven. Open your mouth and pray. Pray for deeper life Bible church worldwide. The Lord will keep this church holy, In Jesus' name we pray. See for the church. The Bible says, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. We want to pray that the passion for souls winning, the passion for evangelism, will fully be restored to every true born again believer in this church. Open your mouth and pray. Passion for souls. Commitment to soul winning. Moving out. Touching lives, bring souls to the kingdom, that the passion will go on in every heart in this church. Revival will start of evangelism in our soul, and that we will move out and bring souls into the kingdom. Let the burning zeal of God be in every one of our hearts. Leaders, workers, members, youths, children, adults, every one of us. This passion, soul winning, evangelism, reaching out, bringing souls into the kingdom, praying them in, winning them in, it will burn in our hearts and will go in action and souls will be brought in into the kingdom of God. Let it start with you. Let it start with me this morning. And the Lord will be glorified in our lives. Pray, my brother. We need a passion for soul. Men are dying. People are perishing. We want to move out, but there must be passion. There must be zeal of the Lord in our hearts. Love of God will constrain us to go and win them unto the Lord. Pray. God will give you that passion. God will give you that zeal. That God will give you that love. In Jesus' name we pray. We want to pray for Jesus. In Joshua chapter 14, verse 12, verse 11. As yet... I am as strong this day as I was in the day that Moses sent me, sent me. As my strength was then, even so is my strength now for war, both to go out and to come in. For pastor, I want to pray that the grace of God, the power of God, the wisdom of God, will increase in his life and in ministry. That as his days and months and years are increasing, so shall the strength of God in his life be increased. Open your mouth and pray for the pastor. His days, his months, his years are increasing. So likewise, the strength of God the strength of the Spirit of God will increase in his life and ministry. The grace of God will be multiplied. The power of God will be multiplied. The anointing of God will be multiplied. The divine protection of God will be all around him as he goes out and come in. Pray for the man of God.
In Jesus' name we pray. We still want to pray for the man of God that the joy of the Lord will increase daily in his life. That the glory of God will radiate him every day of his life. That the presence of God will be with him all through his life here on earth. Wherever he goes, his presence will go with him. As he's coming in, the presence of God will go with him. No evil will befall him in anywhere. Open your mouth and pray for the man of God. He will be protected day in, day night. In the airplane, is protected. Passing across the sea is protected. On the road, is protected. Everywhere he goes, his protection will be upon him. And his banner of love will cover him round. In Jesus' name we pray. What do you want God to do for you this day? What is your heart desire? What do you want to become after today's worship service? Tell the Lord. Tell the Lord. Your desire this morning shall be granted unto you. That spiritual desire, the Lord will do it for you. In Jesus' name we pray. Our Father, we thank you very much for the privilege of coming to you with all our petitions. We, be we believe that you've answered all our prayers. We return all the glory and honor to your name. Accept our praises and thanks in the name of Jesus. We are praying for our nation and we are believing and trusting that whatever may be the gang up of the evil ones, Want it to cause commotion. Want it to cause confusion in our nation. We pray, Lord, that your spirit will silence them in the name of Jesus. Peace will reign in Nigeria. Evil will get out of Nigeria. Your plan and purpose for Nigeria will be actualized in the name of Jesus. And for our church, we believe, God, that your church is marching on and the gates of hell shall not prevail because this church is built on the rock. Therefore, Father, we pray, your banner will cover this church right round. Home and abroad, wherever the church is located, we pray your divine protection will be upon every member of the church in the name of Jesus. Passion for souls, commitment to souls. Lord, I pray, put it in every one of our hearts. We shall move out. We shall touch lives. We shall bring souls into your kingdom. And the joy of heaven shall be filled in every one of our lives in Jesus' name. For our pastor, Lord, we pray that as his days, so shall his strength be. Divine protection. Divine peace. Divine love. Divine power will be upon him right round in the name of Jesus. Wherever he goes, Lord, I pray your presence will go with him. No evil will befall him. In the air, you will be with him. On the road, we'll be with him. Across the sea, you will be with him. Be with him all his days here on earth in the name of Jesus. We have come this morning, Lord, looking up unto you as children will look up unto their father. You know our need. You know our desire. You know our want. Lord, we pray that today, today, you will fulfill the desire of everyone here in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for the answer. In Jesus' name, we pray. And amen. We can be seated. We welcome everyone present in this worship service in the name of Jesus. We want to appreciate everyone that is present here this morning, the members, the leaders, the workers, and our beloved visitors. We appreciate your coming. And the Lord will bless every one of us in Jesus' name. Uh, three times we have our systematic meetings in this church. On Mondays, it's a day of Monday Bible study. We go through the Bible and we have the privilege of our pastor ministering to us direct through the satellite. And the time of our Monday Bible study is 6 p.m. in our various districts and groups. So tomorrow is another day. Please let each and everyone present here this morning 
be at the Bible study tomorrow. And the Lord will bless you tremendously in Jesus' name. Presently, we are in the book of Mark. And I believe God. As we come tomorrow, the Lord will open your eyes of understanding. Thursdays are days of revival and evangelism training service. It has been a wonderful time in our various districts and locations that we come together to, you know, pray unto the Lord and give us miracles and blessings. And at the same time, we have the opportunity to be trained. Then we go out to win souls. So please be in your district or in your location on Thursday by 6 or 6.30 p.m. at the time may be. Then Sundays like this are days of uh, Sunday devotion worship. We meet in our various districts, locations, and groups to really worship God in truth and in spirit. And that coming Sunday, let's all be in our various districts and locations. As we do, the Lord will bless every one of us in Jesus' name. I said, as we do, the Lord will bless you wonderfully in Jesus' name. Don't miss any of the meetings. Make sure you are there, and the Lord will richly bless your life in Jesus' name. God bless you.
before the Sunday message today, we shall have a brief period of scripture reading. The Gospel according to St. Mark. The Gospel according to St. Mark. Chapter 10. Chapter 10. And he arose from thence and cometh into the coasts of Judea by the farther side of Jordan. And the people resort unto him again. And as he was wont, he taught them again. And the Pharisees came to him and asked him, Is it lawful for a man to put away his wife, tempting him? And he answered and said unto them, What did Moses command you? And they said, Moses suffered to write a bill of divorcement and to put her away. And Jesus answered and said unto them, For the hardness of your heart he wrote you this precept. But from the beginning of the creation God made them male and female. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife, and they twain shall be one flesh. So then they are no more twain, but one flesh. What therefore God hath joined together, let not man put asunder. And in the house his disciples asked him again of the same matter. And he saith unto them, Whosoever shall put away his wife and marry another committeth adultery against her. And if a woman shall put away her husband and be married to another, she committeth adultery. And they brought young children to him that he should touch them. And his disciples rebuked those that brought them. But when Jesus saw it, he was much displeased and said unto them, Suffer the little children to come unto me, and forbid them not. For of such is the kingdom of God. Verily I say unto you, Whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of God as a little child, he shall not enter therein. And he took them up in his arms, put his hands upon them, and blessed them. And when he was gone forth into the way, there came one running and kneeled to him and asked him, Good master, what shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? And Jesus said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is, God. Thou knowest the commandments. Do not commit adultery, do not kill, do not steal, do not bear false witness, defraud not, honor thy father and mother. And he answered and said unto him, Master, all these have I observed from my youth. Then Jesus, beholding him, loved him, and said unto him, One thing thou lackest, go thy way, sell whatsoever thou hast, and give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven. And come, take up the cross, and follow me. And he was sad at that saying, and went away grieved, for he had great possessions. And Jesus looked round about, and saith unto his disciples, how hardly shall they that have riches enter into the kingdom of God? And the disciples were astonished at his words. But Jesus answereth again and saith unto them, Children, how hard is it for them that trust in riches to enter into the kingdom of God? It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. And they were astonished out of measure, saying among themselves, Who then can be saved? And Jesus, looking upon them, saith, With men it is impossible, but not with God. For with God all things are possible. Then Peter began to say unto him, Lo, we have left all and have followed thee. And Jesus answered and said, Verily I say unto you, There is no man that hath left house or brethren or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or lands for my sake and the gospel's but he shall receive an hundredfold now in this time houses and brethren and sisters and mothers and children and lands with persecutions and in the world to come eternal life. But many that are first shall be last and the last first. And they were in the way going up to Jerusalem and Jesus went before them and they were amazed and as they followed they were afraid. And he took again the twelve and began to tell them what things should happen unto him, saying, Behold, we go up to Jerusalem, and the Son of Man shall be delivered unto the chief priests and unto the scribes, and they shall condemn him to death and shall deliver him to the Gentiles. And they shall mock him and shall scourge him and shall spit upon him and shall kill him. And the third day he shall rise again. And James and John, the sons of Zebedee, come unto him, saying, Master, we would that thou shouldest do for us whatsoever we shall desire. And he said unto them, What would ye that I should do for you? They said unto him, Grant unto us that 
we may sit one on thy right hand and the other on thy left hand in thy glory. But Jesus said unto them, Ye know not what ye ask. Can ye drink of the cup that I drink of, and be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? And they said unto him, We can. And Jesus said unto them, Ye shall indeed drink of the cup that I drink of, not be among you. But whosoever will be great among you shall be your minister, and whosoever of you will be the chiefest shall be servant of all. For even the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister, and to give his life a ransom for many. And they came to Jericho, and as he went out of Jericho with his disciples and a great number of people, blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the highway side begging. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And many charged him that he should hold his peace. But he cried the more a great deal, Thou son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called. And they called the blind man, saying unto him, Be of good comfort, rise, he calleth thee. And he, casting away his garment, rose and came to Jesus. And Jesus answered and said unto him, What wilt thou that I should do unto thee? The blind man said unto him, Lord, that I might receive my sight. And Jesus said unto him, Go thy way, thy faith hath made thee whole. And immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus in the way. May God help us to be doers of the word. Amen.
It bleeds too much has already been said. Just let it be and learn to listen instead. But sometimes true. The silence, big problems become small. And if you have nothing good to say, say nothing at all. Words you can build mountains in just a moment time and take it to tear down or give longer to climb. Words can separate, they condemn and criticize and be the best of friends. Sometimes you When you hear the latest rumor, the talk of the town, did you try to be fair or did you help to tear down secrets that were shared and were meant to be kept? Or don't talk in a crowd and let you. God had it all. He had all that you have said. He had when you spoke that word. He had that final speech. God had it all. Quiet, please. Mind what you say. Words of power.
Praise the Lord. I welcome everyone to this important service in Jesus' name. And I pray the Lord will bless your heart, will bless your soul, and bless everything you lay your hands upon in Jesus' name. And I pray that the word of God will not just pass over your shoulders, it will do something in your heart something in your family to bring a permanent change upwards in jesus name father we thank you for your people thank you for their faithfulness thank you for coming here today for something good and we pray lord you do wonderfully well in every life in jesus name we pray that your life your word will transform our lives Transform our families, transform our church, and move us forward in a practical way in Jesus' name. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. We're coming to James chapter 3. And I'm reading from verse 1. James chapter 3, reading from verse 1. My brethren, be not many masters, knowing that we shall receive the greater condemnation. For in many things we offend all. If any man offend not in words, the same is a perfect man, and able to bridle, able to control, able to put in check able to put on authority the whole body and then in verse 6 and the tongue is a fire 
a world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members that it defiles the whole body and setteth on fire the whole body, the cause of nature, and is set on the fire of hell. In verse 10, out of the same mouth proceedeth blessing and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not so to be. Verse 13, who is a wise man and endued with knowledge among you. Let him show out of a good conversation his works with meekness of wisdom. Verse 17, but the wisdom which is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, and easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. Chapter 3 of James is peculiar. The whole chapter is devoted to the tongue. And how serious, how important, how essential such a subject should be that the whole chapter of a New Testament book is devoted to the use or misuse of the tongue. Actually, from the whole Bible, coming from Genesis all through to Revelation, you'll find our tongues determine how happy we are in life, how useful we are to the Lord how healthy we are in ourselves, how spiritual we are. All the spiritual experiences we claim, being saved, being sanctified, and being filled with the Holy Ghost, they are all shown or revealed or maybe contradicted by the use of the tongue. It's the tongue that determines how rewardable we're going to be in eternity, how helpful we are here in life, how friendly we are in society. It's the tongue that determines how successful we are, how profitable we are, and how good and well remembered our lives will be after we have gone. And it's the tongue, on the other hand, that determines our sadness, that determines our rejection. You know, somebody says, I don't know why. They reject me everywhere. I turn here, they reject me. I turn there, they reject me. Check up on the use of the tongue. It's the tongue that determines our defeat in life, our loss in life, our failure in life, our suffering. The tongue determines our unanswered prayers. Our self-destruction. We destroy ourselves with our tongue. And eventually the tongue determines our eternal ruin, our eternal damnation. Like a small hem, like a small steering, the steering wheel of a car, of a truck, of a lorry. The tongue drives us to our desirable destination or to a damned destiny. This morning we're examining the word of God together in James chapter 3 from verse 1 to the end on determining our destinies with our tongue. Determining our destinies with our tongue. First Peter chapter 3 I read from verse 10. First Peter chapter 3, verse 10. For he that will love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue. It says, You want a good life, a happy life, a prosperous life, a profitable life, a rewardable life, 
check up on the tongue. Refrain his tongue from evil and his leaves that they speak no girl. Matthew chapter 12. I read from verse 33. Matthew chapter 12. Reading from verse 33. The words of Jesus either make the tree good or its fruit good or else make the tree corrupt and its fruit corrupt for the tree is known by his fruit the tree is known not by the noise the tree may make not by the height of the tree not by the leaves of that tree by the fruit that that tree is bearing you will know the nature of a kind of tree oh generation of vipers how can ye being evil speak good things for out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaketh what is secret it says the problem really is not originally at the dust at the doorstep of the tongue. The problem is at the heart. If the heart is happy, the tongue will talk happily. If the tongue is sad, the tongue will produce sad words. If the tongue is depraved, if the heart is depraved, the tongue will utter things that are dirty and defiling and depraved. If the heart is cleansed, the tongue will utter words that are clean. If the heart is devilish, the tongue also will be devilish. Because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh a good man out of the tr good treasure of the heart bringeth forth good things and an evil man evil at heart out of the evil treasure in the heart bringeth forth evil things but I say unto you that every idle word I remember Idle words come from idle hearts. Vacant, sheep, empty hearts, worthless hearts, the hearts that have not been touched or transformed by the blood of Christ has not experienced the salvation of the Lord because that heart is vain. Because that heart is worthless. And because that heart is uh, not having anything good inside. What comes out is idle word. And it says that every idle word that men shall speak. They shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. For by thy words... Thou shalt be justified by thy words. How about that? Is the tongue that prays? Is the tongue that confesses? Is the tongue that has that shows confidence in Christ? I believe in Christ. It is a tongue that leads him to salvation. Is the tongue that comes to tell the Lord, I am of an unclean tongue. I dwell in the midst of people of unclean leaves. And it is the fire from the altar of God that touches that tongue and transforms that tongue. And so, as you think about it, the expression of the tongue, the faith in the tongue, the confidence expressed by the tongue eventually leads you to life. Because by thy words thou shalt be justified. By thy words, the tongue that says, I'm all right. Although I'm not saved, but I'm all right. I'm not converted, but I'm all right. I have need of nothing. I don't need the Christ of Calvary. 
I don't need the salvation conversion coming from Calvary. It's the tongue that says, I can rule my life. I can lead my life. I can go my own way. And that kind of tongue misses salvation, misses conversion. And by thy words, thou shalt be condemned. Here on earth, our tongue determines how good our families will be, how prosperous the salesman will be. Our tongue determines how good a teacher is. Our tongue determines how good anyone in any field, in any profession is. And our tongue determines what we get out of life. And then on the other side of the grave, it's our tongue that determines what we're going to be on that other side of the grave, determining our destiny with our tongue. A step further, it's unfortunate. We determine other people's destiny with our tongue. The evangelist determines the destiny of sinners with his tongue. The pastor preacher determines the destiny of multitudes of people in the church with his tongue. The wife determines, the mother determines the destiny, the direction of the lives of the children with her tongue. And our leaders in the nation determine the direction of the nation and the destiny of the nation with the tongue we determine quite a lot with our tongue and such a little member the tongue ought to have our attention and to know what to do so that our tongue will lead in the right direction amen James chapter 3 determining our destinies with our tongue. Three things we're looking at. Look at verse 1. Verse 1, it says, My brethren, be not many masters, knowing that we shall receive the greater condemnation. Verse 2, for in many things we offend all. If any man offend not in word, the same is a perfect man. Talk about perfection. If any man offends not in word, that man, if any woman offends not in word, that woman, if a believer offends not in word, that believer is a perfect person and able to bridle the whole body. Point number one, the defining factor in the master's tongue the defining factor in the master's tongue. It's talking about masters. And to be a master, all you need to do is to look at the master. He is the perfect one. He lived a perfect life. And the testimony was given about his tongue, about his speech, and what defined him, what identified him, is the very fact that no man ever speak like this man. John chapter 7. I'm reading from verse 46. John chapter 7, verse 46. And the officers answered, Never man speak like this man. The defining factor in the life of the master that showed him higher above everyone that ever lived is that no man ever speak like this man be not many masters sit down rest and relax check up on the condition of your tongue look at jesus christ the perfect master and see the way he used his tongues and then as you go to him in prayer and he touches your tongue and he transforms his tongue and he replaces your old tongue with his new tongue 
Then he'll put the word in your mouth. And now you can speak. The defining factor in a person that has the mastery. The defining factor in a person that is matured. The defining factor in a person that is moving forward is the tongue. Point number one. The defining factor in the master's tongue. Number two. Look at verse five. James chapter 5, chapter 3, verse 5, even so the tongue is a little member and boasteth great things. Behold, how great a matter a little fire kindles. And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members that it defileth the whole body and setteth on fire the cause of nature. And it is set on the fire of hell. Point number two, the devouring fire in the misused tongue. The devouring fire in the misused tongue. A tongue that is not under control, flippant, a tongue that is always wagging, always nagging, always talking, always moving. Think, talking without thinking. Talking without looking at the final result and the final outcome of what it says. And it spreads fire. It kindles fire. It burns down the family. It burns down a local church. It burns down a tribe. It burns down a profession. It burns down the office. It's the devouring fire in the misused tongue. Point number three. Look at verse 13. Who is a wise man and endued with knowledge among you? Let him show out of a good conversation his works with meekness of wisdom. Verse 17, but the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. The distinguishing fruits of ministering tongues. The fruit that sets us apart. The fruit that distinguishes us. The fruit that makes us distinct. The fruit that tells their fruits by that tongue. The distinguishing fruits of ministering tongues. Point number one. The defining factor in the master's tongue. It tells us in chapter 3 of James verse 1. My brethren, sage. My brethren, professing to know the Lord. My brethren, you are in the kingdom already. My brethren, you came into the kingdom by using your tongue to pray and to say that you're guilty, to say that you are condemned before the Lord. You used your tongue to say that your hope is in Christ and now you are brought into the family of God. My brethren, be not many masters. Be not many masters. Sit back. Watch the master. Before you can be a master, before you can be a teacher, before you can be a rabbi, before you can be a counselor, before you can be an advisor, sit back, hold on, and look at the perfect master, the perfect counselor, and the perfect teacher. Because if we go on to rush into counseling, advising, talking, doing whatever with our tongue, we shall receive the greater condemnation because in many things we offend all. In many things, check up your life. In many things, check up the history of your family and check up 
everyone that has had a problem that came to you and they said, my family is broken. If you check up and go to the final conclusion, it's their tongue that broke the family. Of the tongue of the in-laws that broke the family. Of the tongue of the husband that broke the family. Because in many things will offend all. Somebody is running away from work. Nobody accepts me at work. Nobody is looking at me. They don't give me promotion. What can I do? Pastor, check up. The tongue at work. The tongue, the way we speak to our leaders. The high officers in the place of work. Or the way we look down others and we condemn other people, criticize other people, check up on the tongue. In many things, we offend all, all of us offend. We offend all. I check up the people who are preaching. I don't know, Pastor. I, I do all my best. And I'm really zealous working for the Lord. And I pray, I fast, I study, I read. I do everything. But you know what I discover? The church is jointly. They don't come. And then I come to church, I challenge them. And I talk to them and I said, if everybody is like you, there will be nobody saved. And then I try to tell them, I threaten them, I talk about hell, I talk about heaven. Pastor, they don't come. They don't love God. Check up. Maybe it's your tongue after all. For in many things, we offend all. They are avoiding me. I thought Jesus said, love each other. Second day, by the end of one week, everybody is dodging me. Everybody is running away from me. Check up. They just discovered the tongue. You brought me to that fellowship was a razor blade. And it cuts without mercy. For many things will offend all. If any man offends not in words, that's a master. That's a master. That's what we're looking up to. If anyone offends not in word, the same is a perfect man. That's a master. That's the Lord Jesus Christ. He gave us the example. And he's able also to bridle the whole body. Behold, we put beads in horses' mouths that they may obey us and we turn about their whole body the words of the lord of the father was like the controlling guide and guard in the mouth of the master i say nothing except what the father has taught me behold also the sheep which though they be so great and a driven of fierce winds, yet are they turned about with a very small aim. Do you see the master there? And Lord Jesus Christ was in the ship, and it was stormy, and it was here and there, and the waters were coming into the boat. And the disciples came up and they said, Master, Master, save us, or we perish. And with that little hair, and with that tongue, he rose up and said, Peace be still. And there was a calm. The tongue of faith can bring calmness into your life, calmness into your family, calmness into your troubled sea. You know, if you don't know how to use the tongue like the master did, there'll be many troubles in life and many waves and many storms over your sheep. But it says, well, that's most him. He leads that sheep whithersoever the governor listeth. And we're to be like the master. Matthew chapter 10. Matthew chapter 10. I'm reading from verse 24. Matthew chapter 10. Reading from verse 24. The disciple is not above his master, nor the servant above his Lord. We call him master. We say right. We call him Lord. We say right. Learn of him. See how he used the tongue 
and be a master yourself and make sure that before you speak anything the grace of God has touched your heart has transformed your heart and the grace of God is teaching you what to say what not to say and you're asking yourself if Jesus my Lord my master why in this situation this condition what will he say look at verse 25 it is enough that the disciple be as his master and the servant as his Lord what then was that defining factor in the master's tongue that we may learn that we may know and that we may pray and follow through and speak like he spoke and talk like he talked and use the tongue like he used the tongue Isaiah chapter 50 I'm reading from verse 7 Isaiah chapter 50 let's go back to verse 4 Isaiah chapter 6, 50 verse 4 the Lord God has given me the tongue of the learned given me go to the Lord let him give you the way I speak I don't know why maybe that's just my nature I realize that's the way my father used to speak and of course you know the problem he brought on the family when you were very young the way I speak I think I got it from my mother but you understand you remember what kind of problem brought on the family and on the children because of the tongue of what you are saying maybe that's my nature when I was in school when I was young that's why I used to speak but you are now converted as you are born again and converted and you're a real child of God and now things ought to be different because if any man if any woman if any child if anyone be in Christ he is a new creature old things the old tongue ought to vanish away pass away the old corrosive acidic poisonous evil words ought to vanish away and behold all things ought to become new we need to go to god so he can give each of us a tongue of the learned a person that learns the way to go and the way to talk and the way to bless other people with the tongue look at that verse 4 the Lord God has given me he'll give it to you let me hear a good amen has given me the tongue of the learned that I should know how to speak a word in season to him that is weary to him that is sad to him that is tired to him that is worn out everyone needs the tongue that the Lord will give the tongue of the master the tongue the kind of tongue that Jesus had so we we'll know how to speak a word right word good word encouraging word uplifting word in ceasing to him that is weary he wakeneth morning by morning he wakeneth my ear to hear as the learned the lord god has opened my ear you see that we need to go to the lord that the lord will open our ears our heart our mind and i was not rebellious neither turned away backward i was i gave my back to the smiters that's talking about christ and my cheeks to them that plucked off the air talking about our master i hid not my face from shame and speaking for the lord god will help me 
it will help you to know how to talk, to know what to say, to know when not to say it, to know the appropriate time, and to let your words, your talk, have a positive impact on the people you speak to. The Lord will help me. He will help you. Therefore, shall I not be confounded? Therefore, have I set my face like a flint? I know and I know that I shall not be ashamed. I know. I know. I will not be ashamed. The words you speak will not make you ashamed. Your tongue will not make you ashamed. You'll not say something and say, I wish I didn't say that. I wish I didn't tell that dirty joke. I wish I didn't uh, say that thing to that child. Then you become ashamed. I wish I was not concerned. I was not, um, I was not involved with that kind of slander. I wish I didn't voice out that thing. Then it brings shame. And the Lord will protect you from shame in Jesus' name. Luke chapter 4. Verse 22, Luke chapter 4, reading from verse 22, And all bear him witness, and wondered at the gracious words which proceeded out of his mouth. That's the master. They wondered at the gracious words which proceeded out of his mouth. But you understand, it's because he had a good heart. So he had good words. He had a gracious heart. He had gracious words. He had a refined heart. And so he had refined words. He had a happy heart. And so he had happy words. And he had a loving heart. And because of that, he had loving words. Colossians chapter 4. In Colossians chapter 4, I'm reading from verse 6. We've read about the master. And the master had gracious words. And now that we are following the master. And we're living like the master. And we're being, we've gone back to Calvary. And he has touched our hearts afresh. And because of that, he has touched our tongues afresh. See what happens. Colossians chapter 4, verse 6. Let your speech be always with grace. Always with grace. You remember Christ? Full of grace and full of truth. And so they wondered at the gracious words coming out of his mouth. It says, let your speech be always with grace, seasoned with salt, that she may know how ye ought to answer every man. Have you ever thought about that? That to speak gracious words, our hearts must be full of the grace of God. Thank God, if he has not done it yet, he will do it. Proverbs chapter 31. Proverbs chapter 31. I read from verse 8. Proverbs 31, verse 8. Open thy mouth for the dumb in the cause of all such as are pointed to destruction. The dumb, those who cannot speak for themselves. The helpless, the hopeless, the people who do not know their way out of their problems. Don't create problems for the people that are hopeless and helpless. Think through and say, how will Christ get this man, this woman, this sinner, this member, this believer, out of the predicament he finds himself or she finds herself. The Lord will speak either in prayer 
I will speak to them in counseling to bring them out. And it says, open thy mouth for the dumb. In the cause of all such as appointed to destruction. Verse 9, open thy mouth, judge righteously. Let righteousness be at the background, be at the root, and be at the bottom the support of what you say and plead the cause of the poor and the needy. And you know, Jesus Christ also knew when not to talk. He had knowledge all the time. He knew the subject. He knew the people. He knew the Father's will. He knew history. He knew everything going on in his own time. But he didn't always speak. And the Lord is telling us there are times to be quiet. There are times to say nothing. When you know you cannot do good by what you want to say. Isaiah chapter 53, I'm reading from verse 7. Isaiah chapter 53, verse 7. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. Some people cannot bear a little bit of pain. A little bit of suffering. And suffering sets their tongue moving. Pain sets their tongue moving. And pressure, injustice. If injustice is done against them, or the injustice is against their community, that injustice, they say, I must talk. Not always wise, he was oppressed, a master. And if you're going to have the tongue of the master, you will know when to keep quiet. He was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter. And as a sheep before her shearers is dumb, so he openeth not his mouth. First Peter, in doing that, he has left an example for you and for me, for us all together. First Peter, chapter 2, verse 21. For ye even hereunto were ye called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example, an example of suffering persecution. Sovereign pressure, sovereign injustice, sovereign suffering from the lies of the people, and suffering from all the evil intention. He says, He has given us an example that we should follow in His steps who did no sin, neither was guile found in His mouth. Who, when he was reviled, reviled not again. When he suffered, he threatened not. Was uh, master, lord, king, he had power. He could call down legions of angels to scatter his enemies. You know, some people, if they think they have power, they have authority. And they can do and undo. And nobody is going to question them or challenge them. They give themselves the ultimate, final authority to oppress the helpless. The people like that. But Jesus Christ will not threaten. When he suffered, he threatened not. But he committed himself to him that judges righteously. I pray that same virtue the Lord will give unto us. That same gracious attitude and gracious word the Lord will give to every one of us in Jesus' name. Revelation chapter 14. In Revelation chapter 14, reading from verse 4, 
These are they which were not defiled with women, believers, for they are virgins. These are they which follow the Lamb whithersoever he goes, believers, followers of Christ. These were redeemed from among men, being the first fruits unto God and to the Lamb. Verse 5. And in their mouth was found no girl, no lies, no deception, no hypocrisy. In their mouth was found no girl, and they are without fault before the throne of God. The Lord reproduced that in every life in Jesus' name. Point number two, the devouring fire in the misused tongue. We're coming to chapter three of James, verse five, verse six. Even so, the tongue is a little member and boasted great things. Behold, how great a matter, a little fire kindleth, a little fire of argument in the family, a little fire of disagreement with your boss, a little fire of dispute in the boss. No, that's not the amount I should receive. That's what I gave to you. I must have this back. This all you have. What did you give me? How much did you give me? That little fire of debate can bring a whole life down. And they begin to fight and they stab each other. The tongue, the six, is a fire. A world of inequity. So is the tongue among our members that it defiles the whole body. You know what that is saying? No matter your gifts, you're sharp sighted, you can see. No matter your gifts, you hear something and you can repeat that thing verbatim. You have a sharp brain, memory. And no matter how fast you can walk, you want to get there, your feet are swift in running there. No matter how skillful you are, or skilled you are, your hands very skillful. And no matter how strong your bone, your backbone can carry any weight, your whole body, the success of the defeat, depends on that little member on your tongue. And so if you practice and strengthen your legs, your feet, you practice and you make your hands skillful, and you practice and you make your eyes very sharp, your visionary, and every part of your body is all right, except your tongue, look at this, it sets on fire. The cause of nature, and it is set on the fire of hell. Would you remember that the tongues of people brought the fiery judgment of God upon them? We're looking at Numbers chapter 16. Numbers chapter 16, I'm reading from verse 1. Numbers chapter 16, we're reading from verse 1. Now Korah, the son of Ezer, the son of Kohath, the son of Levi, and Dathan and Abiram, the sons of Eliab, and On, the son of Peleth, sons of Reuben, took men. And they rose up before Moses was certain of the children of Israel, 200 
and fifty princes in the assembly. Men of note, men of weight, men of authority, men of respect. Two fifty princes of the assembly, famous in the congregation, men of renown. And he gathered themselves together against Moses and against Aaron and said unto them, Ye take too much upon you, seeing all the congregation are holy, every one of them, and the Lord is among them. Wherefore then lift ye up yourselves above the congregation of the Lord. It's a long story. You can read the whole chapter and get back home, but let me show you the conclusion. We're looking at verse 35. Verse 35. Verse 35. And there came out a fire from the Lord and consumed the 250 men that offered incense. Men of power. Men of position, men of authority, their tongue attracted the judgment of God, the judgment of fire. We're looking at Numbers chapter 21. Numbers chapter 21. I'm reading from verse 4. Numbers chapter 21, verse 4. And they journeyed from Mount Hall by the way of the Red Sea to compass the land of Edom. And the soul of the people was much discouraged because of the way. And the people spake against God and against Moses. Discouragement sometimes will set the tongue moving, but in the right direction. Set the tongue nagging, the tongue wagging. They have something to complain about. They have something to murmur about. The discouragement, the tiredness, the sadness. We're not enjoying the movement. The road is raw. The hill is steep. How can we go this direction? And then they spoke against God and against Moses. Then he goes on to say in verse 6, And the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people, and they beat the people, and much people of Israel died. Much people of Israel died. Many of them in their thousands. Because of the wrong use of the tongue, that's what happened to them. I say, chapter 33, reading from verse 12. I say, chapter 33, verse 12. It says in verse 12, I say, chapter 33, verse 12, and the people shall be as the bonies of lime, and thorns cut up shall they be burnt in the fire. Why? Hear ye that are far off what I have done and ye that are near acknowledge my might. The sinners in Zion are afraid. Fearfulness has surprised the hypocrites who among us shall dwell with the devouring fire who among us shall dwell with everlasting bonnies. The problem of the tongue. The Lord preserve us from fiery judgment in Jesus' name. The Lord preserve your family. The Lord preserve my family. The Lord preserve your local church. The Lord preserve our headquarters church. The Lord preserve the whole of deep and life from all these wagging tongues in Jesus' name. James chapter 3, I read from verse 9. James 
chapter 3. I'm reading from verse 9. It says in verse 9, There we were bless God, even the Father, and there we is, cause we may. You see what he's saying here? Uh, he's talking about tongues that on the one hand you're praising God during the service. Blessing God during the service. And the moment they go out of the doors of the church, they're cursing, they're angry, they're fighting. And I say some things that you say, this is the opposite of what you are saying now. When you are in the church, have you found people who preach sound doctrine, good words, nice words, while we're in the church, as they go out of the church, somebody offends them, and they curse, and they're angry, and they're bitter. It says, their ways will bless God, even the Father. Their ways will curse me, which are made in the similitude of God. Out of the same mouth proceedeth blessing and cursing. Would you remember Nebuchadnezzar in Daniel chapter 2? He said, There is no God like your God who can reveal secrets. And then he was so excited about Daniel and about the God of Daniel. He promoted Daniel and promoted Shedak, Meshach, and Abednego. Chapter 2 of Daniel. Chapter 3, from the first verse. He raised up an idol and he said, Everybody shall worship. He had about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego who will not worship. The person who exalted God in chapter 2, end of chapter 2, now in chapter 3 said, If you hear the music and you refuse to fall down, who is that God that will deliver you out of my hand? You see that? Blessing God, chapter 2, and cursing men, chapter 3. There are people like Nebuchadnezzar. They seem to honor God this minute, and the very next minute, they are cursing men. Out of the same mouth proceeded blessing and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not so to be. Does a fountain send forth at the same place sweet water and bitter? Can the fig tree, my brethren, bear only berries? Either the vine figs, so can no fountain, but yield salt, water, and fresh. It's talking about the people that, you know, talk from two sides of their mouth. And they say different things. Sweet, bitter, bitter, sweet. And then they get confused. They put bitter for sweet, and they put sweet for bitter. Isaiah chapter 5. Isaiah chapter 5. We're reading from verse 20. Isaiah chapter 5, verse 20. One to them that call evil good and good evil, that put darkness for light and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. They talk sweet, they talk bitter, they talk blessing, they, call, they talk cursing, they talk joy, they talk laughter, they talk good, they talk evil. And it says, watch them. Look at verse 24. Therefore, because of that double-mindedness and because of that double tongue, you cannot predict. They say something good now. Don't be too excited. Hold on, hold on. Wait. They might now say something not bitter. And because of that duplicity, look at the result. Therefore, as the fire devours stubble, the stubble, and the flame consumes the chaff, 
So their root shall be as rottenness, and their blossom shall go up as dust, because they have cast away the law of the Lord of hosts and despised the word of the Holy One of Israel. Let's come back to James chapter 3. James chapter 3. I'm reading now from verse 14. But if ye are bitter, envying, and strive in your hearts, remember, the tongue is connected to the heart. If there's bitter envying in the heart, the mouth will express it. If there is strife in the heart, remember, the tongue will come out or strive. Glory not, lie not against the truth. This wisdom descended not from above, but is earthly, sensual, devilish. For where envy and strife is, there is confusion and every evil work. Where there is envy, don't say there is salvation. Where there is strife, don't say there is salvation. And where there is fleshly heart, worldly heart, and where there is sensuality, defilement, don't say there is salvation. And where there is devilishness, somebody is devilish, is always thinking out something, is a genius in thinking out something devilish. And his tongue, without any preparation, will just roll it out. Devilish things. Don't say there's salvation there. Because it says where envy and strife is, there'll be confusion. There'll be every evil work. You remember what you're saying? You remember this point? The devouring fire in misused tongues. Where there is envy, fire eventually fire of judgment will come. Look at Isaiah chapter 26. I'm reading from verse 11. Isaiah chapter 26 verse 11. Lord, when thy hand is lifted up, they will see, they will not see, but they shall see and be afraid. Look at this. For their envy for their envy at the people yea the fire of thine enemies shall devour them envy and the fire devouring and fire and James also talks about strife strife where envy and strife is there's every evil work Proverbs chapter 26 where there's strife don't profess salvation. Proverbs chapter 26, reading from verse 20. Where there is no wood, the fire goes out. So where there is no tail bearer, strive ceases. As coals are to burning, are to burning coals, and wood to fire. So is a contentious man to kindle strife. Envy, fire. Strive, fire. And you know, James chapter 3 also talks about that kind of wisdom. It's earthly. It's not heavenly. Earthly. Philippians chapter 3. In Philippians chapter 3, Verses 18 and 19. For many walk, of whom I have told you often, and I'll tell you even weeping, that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ, whose end is destruction, 
whose God is their belly, whose glory is in their shame. Look at this, who mind earthly things, earthly things, their enemies of God, their God is their belly, and those enemies they show because they are earthly. They don't think about heaven. All their consideration is about things here on earth. What happens to them eventually? Psalm 97, reading from verse 3. Psalm 97, verse 3. A fire goes out before him and burneth up his enemies round about. It also talks about those who are sensual, those who are carnal, those who are fleshly, those who are adulterous, and those who commit the sins of the flesh. What happens to them? Jude chapter 1, and I'm reading from verse 15. Jude chapter 1, reading from verse 15, to execute judgment upon all and to convince all that are ungodly among them of all the ungodly deeds which they have ungodly committed and of all their hard speeches which ungodly sinners have spoken against him these are murmurers complainers walking after their own lusts and their mouth speaketh, their mouth speaketh, their mouth, we're talking about their tongue, their mouth speaketh great swelling words, having men's persons in admiration because of advantage. Verse 19, these be they who separate themselves. Tell me the next word there. Tell me the next word. Tell me out aloud. Sensual, having not the spirit. What's their end? Look at verse 7. In verse 7, even as Sodom and Gomorrah, sensual, and the cities round about in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh, are set forth for an example suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. It's telling us that as you look at the whole passage, and it talks about the people that misuse their tongues, whether they are sensual, or they are earthly, or they have strife, or they have envy, that the end result is eternal fire. And it talks about them finally, as devilish. It says, this wisdom is earthly. This wisdom is sensual. This wisdom is devilish. What's the end of that? Revelation chapter 20 verse 10. The wisdom is devilish. Chapter 20 of Revelation verse 10 and the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are, and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. Verse 15, and whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. I will not go there. I said, I will not go there. Your tongue will determine your destiny. We'll come to point number three. The distinguishing fruits of ministering tongues. These are people that know that the tongue matters in everything we say, everything we do, 
that even the idle words, the vain words, the careless words, the slanderous words, and the words that cause strife and fighting will have the punishment of fire on the final day. And even before the final day, will burn off their works, the works of their hand, even now at this present time. And because of that, they go to Calvary and they allow the fire of purging and the fire of cleansing and the fire of refining to touch their tongues and now wisdom from above is given unto them and they speak with the wisdom of Christ and the lives are turned around like my life will be turned around today your lives will be turned around in Jesus name James chapter 3 I read from verse 13 who is a wise man and endued with knowledge among you. Let him show, let him reveal, let him demonstrate, let him give us the evidence out of a good conversation, his words with meekness of wisdom, conversation, talk, interaction, speaking to that fellow, speaking to that brother, Speaking to that sister, speaking to that friend, speaking to your husband, speaking to your wife. Remember, the heart, the heart. If you love somebody, the language will come out with love. Out of the abundance of their heart, the must speak it. If you are wise on the inside, your tongue will reveal. Out of the abundance of their heart, the mouth will speak. For 17 but the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality, without hypocrisy. And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace, divine wisdom, affects and influences our hearts, the way we speak. That divine wisdom will speak to the sinner and lead him to repentance, will speak to the backslider and lead him to restoration, will speak to the believer and lead him to consecration. You speak with wisdom. You will lead souls to Christ. Great will be your reward here on earth and in eternity in Jesus' name. Psalm 37. Psalm 37, reading from the statue. The mouth of the righteous speaketh wisdom. The salvation, the mouth of the righteous speaketh wisdom. The sanctification, the mouth of the righteous speaketh wisdom. Somebody who is saturated with the word of God, and the word of God has come to his life to cleanse his life, and he is righteous. Somebody is just coming out of the church, and he had the word of God. After hearing the word of God, he went to God in prayer. And something happened, and God gave him a wisdom from above. The mouth of that righteous person get him back home, or in the bus, or in the car, or on the road. The mouth of the righteous speaketh wisdom, and his tongue talketh of judgment. The law of his God is in his heart. Remember the heart and the tongue? If the law of the Lord is in his heart, it will affect his tongue. The law of his God is in his heart. And none of his steps shall slide. I'm talking about somebody there. You will not slide. You will not backslide. This wisdom from above will be yours in Jesus' name. Proverbs 
chapter 31. Proverbs chapter 31, verse 26. She opens her mouth with wisdom. That's a virtuous woman. Sage, righteous, that's a good wife. That's a good mother. That's a good aged woman in the church. Teaching other women the things that are good. Helping other women to draw near to God, to love their husbands, to love their children, and to be a blessing to people in the community. She opens her mouth with wisdom. In her tongue is the law of kindness. He has a covenant with her tongue. He has a law, a principle on her tongue. If that is not a kind word, I won't say that to my husband. If that is not going to reveal me as a kind mother, I won't say that to my child. If that is not going to convince that sister I'm kind to her, I love her, I appreciate her, I sympathize with her in her condition, I'm not going to say the word. There's a law. He has a law of kindness in her mouth. Verse 31. Give her the fruit of her hands and let her own works praise her in the gates. We're looking at Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4. I read from verse 28. Ephesians chapter 4. Wisdom and the tongue that speaks the words of wisdom. The words that help not to hurt. The words that heal not to endanger. The words that encourage, the words that lift up, not to discourage, not to beat down. The words that makes a person happy, holy, righteous, healthy, not words like, that act like acid. In Ephesians chapter 4, verse 29, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of a divine, that it may minister grace to the hearers, Minister grace to the hearers. I pray your words will minister grace. Job chapter 16. I'm reading from verse 4. Job chapter 16. Reading from verse 4. I also could speak as she do. Here is Job. The came. He was sick. He was really suffering. And his suffering, they had never seen anything like this before. They claimed to be his friends. And they heaped words of condemnation, of criticism. They saw nothing good in Job. God saw something good in him. Even Satan saw something good and said, you made a hedge around him. But these friends came, they condemned Job altogether. And Job said, you know what? I could speak as he do. If your soul were in my soul's stage, I could heap up words against you and shake my head at you. Verse 5, but... I won't do that. I'm kind. But I won't say such words you are saying to me. I won't say that to you. If you were in my condition and I saw you in this condition, I'll take a different road. I'll act in a different way. I'll be an encouragement. I'll lift up your faith. I will move you towards God. But I will strengthen you with my mouth. 
and the moving of my leaves shall assuage your grief. You see, they were not doing right, and Job said, stop talking to me. Even your talk is bringing more pressure and more pain and more discomfort unto me. If I were in your situation and you were in my situation, I'll talk different. Psalm 119. Psalm 119. Verse 171. 119. 171. My leaves shall utter praise when thou hast taught me thy statutes. I come to the sanctuary. I learn from the word of God the statutes of the Lord. And then my tongue will utter praise. Proverbs chapter 25. Proverbs chapter 25. Reading from verse 15, Proverbs 25, verse 15. By long forbearing is a prince persuaded, and his soft tongue, a soft tongue, not harsh, not brutal, not cruel, not cutting, not acidic. A soft tongue breaks the bone. I pray the Lord will do it in our lives. Isaiah chapter 6. Isaiah chapter 6. Reading from verse 5. Isaiah chapter 6 verse 5. Then said I, Who is me? Here is Isaiah, a prophet of God. A minister of God. And here you are, a believer. I minister to. And the Lord wants us to act with humility, like I said. And check up how we've been using our tongue. And what has been the fruit of our tongue. What has been the deciding factor, the defining factor in our tongue, if we have got the mastery. Or if it has been devouring fire. We're threatening people with our tongue. We're cruel with our tongue. We're deceitful with our tongue. And we make fire to burn down, burn down the work, the company of other people with our tongue. I say I was sincere. He came to the Lord. He wouldn't hide anything. Then said I, what is me? I am undone because I am a man of unclean leaves and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean leaves for mine eyes have seen the king the lord of hosts then flew one of the seraphims unto me having a life coal in his hand which he had taken with tongues from off the altar and laid it on my mouth. I pray the fire of the Holy Ghost will burn out every unclean thing from every mouth this morning in Jesus' name. Amen. And said, Lo, this has touched thy lips, and thine iniquity is taken away, and thy sin is purged. This is sanctification experience. He had known the Lord before this time. He had even been speaking for the Lord before this time. But now he came to the Lord for another touch, a definite touch. And the coal of fire from the altar of God touched his lips. He can do it for every one of us this morning. And after that is done, there was the witness of the Holy Spirit and the angel bearing witness, this has touched thy leaves, you are cleansed, you are purged. Also, I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? Then said I, Here am I, send me.
everybody. Then said I, here am I, send me. Once again. Say from the depth of your heart. Say it with a cleansed tongue. The work of God will prosper your hands in Jesus' name. Let's really pray this morning. Go to the Lord in prayer now. Rise up and let us pray. And take all this that we have learned. Take everything to the Lord in prayer. Check up your mouth, your tongue, your lips, your words, your conversation, and the family, with your friends, with your neighbors, with co workers, in the market. On the table, a table, when you're eating, what do you chew? What do you talk? Do you slander? Do you criticize? Do you insult? Do you tear church members, ministers in pieces? Is your tongue unclean, not under control, tongue dirty, defiling, telling dirty jokes, deceitful, lying, corrosive, destructive. What kind of tongue do you have? You bless and curse, lift up and pull down, hell and hinder. You draw near, drive away. What kind of tongue do you have? Does your tongue drive people away? Or does your tongue draw them? Into the grace of God. How do you use your tongue? Come to the altar this morning. Let the coal of fire, let the Holy Ghost touch your mouth, touch your mind, touch your heart, touch your inner life, change your language. Then will the ministry of the word prosper in your mouth. Church, it is time for us to check our lives. Many of us, we have used our tongues so much negatively. It's time to check all. As ministers, leaders, pastors, members, visitors here this morning, the Lord has opened our eyes to see what is happening inside us. Let's go to the Lord in prayer now. First of all, think about all that has happened through your tongue and go to the Lord and say, Lord, have mercy on me. Ask the Lord to have mercy on you. Oh, Lord, have mercy on me. You have used your tongue to ruin your home. You have used your tongue to ruin your children. You have used your tongue to hinder your neighbors from coming to know the Lord. You have used your tongue to drive members away from the church. Tell the Lord, Lord, have mercy on me. That's the very first beginning. Ask the Lord, Lord, have mercy on me. Don't let us gloss over it. Don't let us gloss over all those things. Check up whoever you may be. Check your family life, your relationship with your wife. You have used your tongue to run down your wife. Your wife doesn't have a confidence of a believer any longer. You have used your tongue to run down your husband. The husband is always afraid, always doubting whether he's a Christian. You have used your tongue to send your children away from the church. 
to send them away from the kingdom. Ask God to have mercy on you. Ask God to forgive you this morning. Let's pray to the Lord. It's a period of repentance. Church repentance. Our tongue, good use of our tongue, who have made our churches to grow. Many of us, our fellowships are dwindling. We open our mouths in our fellowships. We turn people away. They say, I don't want to come again. In our churches, our location, our members are running away. They are going to other churches. They say, the way my pastor speaks to me, it's not good. Let's repent. Ask the Lord to have mercy on you. Ask the Lord to have mercy on you. Determining our destiny with our tongue. This morning, we have seen it very clearly that that little member that we are carrying inside our mouth will determine our destiny. That's why you need to repent. Think about it. When you repent this morning, you make up your mind. All those people that you have offended, that they have run away from the kingdom, with this same tongue, you will go and apologize to them. My brother, my sister, have mercy on me. Forgive me. I was wrong. You go and apologize to your wife, to your husband, I was wrong. Apologize to your children, I was wrong. Don't just keep on complaining. My children, they are running to other places, they are running to other churches. No, it is because of you. Let's pray, God, we have mercy on us. We have mercy on us. This morning, God, we do something new. There will be a change, a turning around in our families, a turning around in our lives, a turning around in our homes, in our churches. Let's pray to the Lord. Pray and ask the Lord. Mention them one by one. Yes, you have been born again for a long time. Isaiah was a prophet, but he confessed. He confessed. Woe is me. Woe is me. I live with men of untamed tongues, unclean, unclean tongues. Confess. God wants to do something new. He wants to begin something new in our lives, in our ministries, in our churches, our homes this year. In Jesus' name we pray. The defining factor in the master's tongue, we have gotten our, our, ourselves to the Lord, we are born again, and uh, we read the Bible, we hear the word of God, we see the life of our, our, our pastor here, we, we hear him, we hear him talking to us, even when he's rebuking us, we see the way he says it. We are going to tell the Lord that God of heaven, he will give us the tongue of the learned. Pray to the Lord, Lord, give me the tongue of the learned. The tongue of the learned. We need to sit back this morning. Watch the master. Sit back this morning. Watch our GS here. Sit back. Many of us, we have had close interaction with him. We see the way he reviews, the way he talks, with a focus. Let's tell the Lord. Jesus sent us with a gospel of peace, not gospel of contention, not gospel of confusion, Ask the Lord to give you a tongue, of faith, a tongue of faith as we speak. Speak to our wives, speak to our husbands, speak to our children, speak to our leaders, speak to officers in, the, uh, in our place of war, speak to our neighbors. Lord, give me the tongue of the learned. Give me the tongue of faith. That God will help us to speak the words that will not offend anybody. Even if somebody has done something wrong, ask God, give me the tongue of correction, spirit of correction. We correct people with meekness. Tell the Lord, Lord, help me. Help me that the words of my mouth will be gracious words. Because the master spoke gracious words. 
let my speech always be with grace. Give me the grace to follow the two steps of Jesus Christ. In speech, in ministering, in conversation, I want to follow the footsteps of Jesus Christ. Oh Lord, help me. Help me. There will be no guile in my mouth, no deception in my mouth. No matter what you want to say, no matter what you want to pass out across, not with deception, not with guile, not with lying. Let's pray, the Lord will help us.